Welcome to our fourth episode of America in Crisis, Breaking the Cycle of Addiction. My name is David Hunt, and I will be your host today. I am honored to have State Representative James Dwyer as my special guest today. James represents the 30th Middlesex District in the Massachusetts House of Representatives. He was a member of the Women Housing Authority from 2000 to 2004 and the City Council from 2006 to 2009. Middlesex Juvenile Court Assistant Probation Officer 2002 to 2007. Also the Juvenile Probation Officer 1975 to 2002. Welcome, Jim, and thank you for your many years of service in our community. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, no this problem. Is, this should be our last time in saying you're about to retire shortly. I am. It'll be, I think I have uh, about seven more days while I'm the state representative. So <laughs> on January 2nd, uh, Rich Hegarty will be sworn in as the uh, new uh, new uh, state representative. And I'm sure uh, Rich is a great guy, and I'm sure he'll do a fantastic job. He has big shoes to fill, sir. You have been doing this for so long, well, so be big shoes. You gave him a real bodice to go after. Well, I appreciate those kind words, David. Thank you so much. Okay. As we're aware, on August 2018, the Baker Polito administration signed H.R. 4742. This is an act for the prevention and access to appropriate care and treatment of addiction. Jim, part of this bill, all prescribed is to convert to secure electronic prescriptions, including Schedule II drugs, by 2020. How will this make a difference now that these are electronic and not on paper and preventing fraud well, and gonna, controlling it? It's going to make a huge difference, obviously. I mean, anything electronically is going to take, a, hopefully, and I didn't hmm. mention, hopefully take the human error out of it. You know, and I know that the Baker, I've spoken to both the governor and the lieutenant governor, you know, on this uh, addiction problem and on hmm. the legislation that was filed by them. And uh, obviously I supported the legislation. And uh, I mean, without, you know, I mean, it's, right. it's a very serious problem. and. Anything we can do to, to stop that cycle of addiction uh, is, uh, is we could do anything we possibly can. I mean, it's, it's an incredible crisis in this country, as you oh, absolutely you show. And, you know, it's, it's so sad because you have uh, such great families and, you know, great people that, uh, that uh, now all of a sudden get addicted to drugs. And it's a very, very sad thing, not only for themselves, yeah. but their family and their friends. So okay. it's a very, very sad situation. And it's not bad people either that get addicted. No. People have treatment. People get no. an injury. They get on an opioid. No. And it's impossible to get off of. These are good, hardworking people that got caught up in this. Well, we've come a long way in that. And I have to give the Attorney General, uh, Mara Healy, Healy, a lot of credit for that. And, there's a woman gentleman, I won't mention his name, but he's a, a close personal friend, and he's running the, uh, one of the units at the, in the Attorney General's office to, uh, to really put uh, the doctors that are over-subscribing okay. for, for injuries and stuff like out of business. Because mm -hmm. that, that, that is it. That's something that uh, was forgotten for a long, 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 long and many years. So uh, I know that he's doing a great job, and uh, I know the Attorney General is really uh, focused on this situation. Can I ask a little more detail as far what is the AG actually doing? I understand this is a problem. They knew about this. They knew these were addictive. In fact, emails going back and forth now showed how addictive this was, that they created this nightmare. How, how is cost recovery going to help the state of Massachusetts if we do well, file suit? It's going gonna, it's gonna to help us everywhere. I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 for, for many, many years, it was a thing that everybody put blinkers on, mm. didn't want to look at it, you know, and didn't want to uh, admit that his or her child would, might have a problem. It was just one of these things. But I think the focus that the legislature, I know over the last eight years, uh, since my ten, since my the beginning 10 years ago when I started, I know that over the last uh, eight years, there's really been an, an incredible focus on the opioid crisis, and I have to give uh, you know, Governor Baker an awful lot of credit for that. Yes. I also understand that our uh, Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan, obviously I've mentioned before with the opioid task force that she spearheaded, has done such a great job bringing police chiefs, fire chiefs, EMS providers, and counselors in a room once a month, and that's just one episode of what she does. I mean, this is amazing, all these people getting together in the same room, bouncing ideas off each other, showing presentations. How do you think between Marion Ryan, Mara Healy, the district attorney? Well, there's, uh, a, the lot, there's a lot of other people that have to take credit for this and, and deserves a lot of kudos. I mean, it, and please, right, please name some of these. Yeah, people. right to the top of my head, Mike Higgins and Vinnie mm -hmm. Perro down at uh, Woburn District Court when I first came down from Woburn, uh, from Lowell, excuse me, okay. uh, I, when I w became an assistant chief and took over the Wuben division of the juvenile court. Uh, Mike and obviously Vinny was the, yep. the chief on the adult side and Mike was uh, a, a probation on the, uh, on, on the adult side. And I, 
I know Mike, uh, if it wasn't for Mike, we wouldn't have had a lot of these programs, like the Clean Start program okay. that Mike and I, in conjunction, worked with. And that was just to try to destigmatize mm -hmm. the, the opiate, uh, the addiction part of it, but also to give uh, first-time offenders a little bit of a break instead of giving them a, a direct court record. We develop a program with the prosecutors throughout Mis Middlesex County and the Middlesex DA. Uh, you know, you have a little bit of uh, drug and alcohol uh, uh, education. It wasn't a therapeutic problem, but Michael took it to the next level. And Mike and Vinny took it to uh, having uh, opiate beds, mm -hmm. availability, and uh, you know, Wuben's been very, very fortunate to have Mike Higgins, uh, and now, who now is doing this particular work uh, for the town manager, John Curran, up in Oh, Barreca. yes, I knew John very So well. I, I give John Curran a lot of credit uh, for bringing Mike up there, and I know, and I know for a fact that Mike is, uh, is doing a great job. The heat program was- yes, I was gonna actually yeah, just ask the you- the heat program was just, just an incredible thing, and, and to become a juvenile, uh, I was a, an assistant chief with the juvenile court and to see so many troubled families and kids uh, because of parental drug and alcohol problems uh, is very, very sad. But uh, they took it to the next level and actually had beds for, for detox, that type of stuff. So I give him a lot of credit. And Rick Jolly. Yeah, absolutely. He was just, I guess, last week. Yeah, exactly. Ricky was doing a great job when he was a police officer here in the city of Woburn. And uh, I was proud to uh, do an amendment uh, this past budget season that uh, gave $15,000 to Ricky's program wow. for, uh, for, you know, for, for more education and allow him to do a little bit more than he's nominally doing. So I'm hoping that I know that 15 grand that we got in the state budget for Rick and his program will go a long ways. I know he'll do, use it very, very well. Well, you brought up the heat program. Was, our viewers don't realize, before all this was in the paper and on TV about the heat program, about all the other programs, we had heat. Vinnie Pirro started the heat program many, many years ago. I believe 18, 20 years have gone by. I believe so, somewhere, somewhere in that now. area. What can you tell us about the heat program? And I want to cut Jim off, but I didn't do us heat so much with the work of Vinnie Pirro. Right on my cell phone, I have the heat, <laughs> heat logo, proud to display yeah, it. Yeah. Vinnie Pirro's done an excellent job. This is before they started making the paper, making TV, becoming a nightly news thing, the crisis of America, America on drugs. Vinnie was in the trenches before this became public. What can you actually tell us about heat? Well, I, I, I know it started, uh, you know, obviously uh, it started on a very, not informal basis, mm -hmm. but a small basis, you know, program here, program here. It was kind of a little bit of an outgrowth of the uh, Clean Stop program okay. that Mike, Mike and I had kind of developed a little bit. But Mike and Vinny uh, took it to that next level, and I can tell you that it, it's the envy of Middlesex County and statewide. I mean, uh, they've gotten accolades from senators, and uh, it was a program that uh, not a lot of district courts had developed. Wuben was one of the first one, or yeah. the first one in the state. So, you know, Vinny just, uh, you know, took it to its next level, and, and I'm hoping that it's branched out because they have they have a symposium every year, you know, in Middlesex yeah, County. Yeah, absolutely. Where, yeah, where they bring in speakers, and uh, it, and they bring in mostly the uh, court uh, drug drug affiliated yeah. people in the courts. And it just, they disseminate information. They have little workout, breakout groups where they share information back and forth. I've actually attended these. They happen in May, actually on the same weekend right. as Flag Day. And it's over at the Hilton. I've attended these programs. Obviously, uh, Mike has been there. Mike Higgins has been there. Uh, Vinnie Pirro has been there. They've brought in some people that have been addicted and on uh, issues and they've recovered and they've shown their experience how regards who you are what you've been through if you want the help and you go for the help you can get the help that's needed I mean that has to be commended there's about 300 400 people there we're just talking guests healthcare workers police chiefs but it is so informative that they bring this out and even some members of the public go it's just amazing the amount of work that between Vinnie Pirro Mike Higgins District Attorney Marion Ryan the Baker Polito administration, people are starting to realize. Even our, our legislatures, our state reps, our senators are realizing, you know, it's nice to sit there, it's nice to make a vote, but these people are getting out and doing something. They're introducing legislation constantly that's helping the constituents, helping the public. And if you hear the, well, if you hear the debates and what's going on, these people are all for it. It's so bipartisan, it's not playing politics. I mean, it's nice when you get something that this much of a crisis, it's not, I'm a Democrat, but you brought it up as you're a Republican, so I'm not gonna vote for it and let people die. It is so bipartisan that people are coming together and addressing the problem. I mean, I know in the past, politics played a role. Don't you agree in the old days? 
Well, I mean, I, I started in probation in 1975, and uh, I think I've got a pretty good perspective. And I was uh, involved with this stuff, troubled families and kids, for 35 years of my life. And to see the tragedies that happened because of alcohol abuse and drug abuse. But it used to be the focus was all alco alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, drug abuse was right along there, but a lot of, a lot of, a lot of folks didn't want to recognize that, uh, you know, drugs were a problem. Uh, drugs have been a problem for, for, for hundreds of years. And, but the focus, I think, came out uh, probably in, in the uh, mid-70s, towards the 80s. But, for example, you take the heat program over. I mean, yep. a lot of, when, when I was in Lowell District Court, you'd come in there, and we had a lot of, a lot of heroin addiction in Lowell. A lot of drug addiction at all. And there were pro programs there. But if you just came into the court and said, oh, I have a drug problem, they, nobody knew what to do with you. But when you have a heat program, nobody's turned away. They actually have a staff that actually looks for beds, makes recommendations to how you get your help. And more importantly, they got a lot of parents that come through those doors nowadays that have drug addicted uh, children. And they're just, I, my heart goes out to the parents. They really do. My hat goes out to their, their, their children. But uh, parents are just scratching their head, what can I do to help my child? I don't want my child to die. But now, at least when you come through the district courts, there's a little bit more information that you can access, more programs, because of more money that's appropriated by the legislature. So the programs are more active than they've ever been before. And, and uh, you know, I don't know if we'll see it eradicated in, in my life, but at least a, you can see the trajectory of it mm -hmm. going in the right direction for, for, for uh, you know, assessment and, and treatment, so. And that's where this house bill is so important when it goes through. It freed up a lot of money for the people that don't have money that want to get on the treatment programs. And that's out there before. If you didn't have insurance, you were on your own. If you had some insurance, you go to one of these houses or one of these faraway estates when it's a retreat, and it sounds great, but the minute that insurance runs out, it's you're out the door. The money stops, the treatment mm -hmm. stops. And now this house resolution, this bill is so important, it's freeing up money so if people want to get treatment, that it's out there. Why do you feel it's important that the state and the federal government starts releasing money that the public can use rather than rely on their own funding? I mean, parents funding? It's funding oh. for the programs. Yeah. The, these programs are being released that if that they're offered to the public at free of charge or at very little charge well, I, versus going into a $30,000 retreat. Yeah, no, a lot of people don't have insurance policies to cover those things. So at least with the new addiction program through this, there's some help to alleviate mm -hmm. a lot of uh, what's not covered by insurance. You know, it's not perfect, but it's certainly just pointed in the right direction, that's for sure. And now the new list, list bill also uh, frees up the use of uh, Nacolon or Nacan. It's making it more available at your local CVS, your Walgreens without a prescription, so you can get this over the counter. Why is this important that this life-saving drug is as many places that we can well, get this in as many hands? somebody's having an overdose in the street, I mean, years ago, you'd have to go to a medical facility and get Nacan. Now you can go to your Walgreens or, or, or shops right around the corner and get the, get the Nacan and... So it's a lifesaver. Not can not not can is proven to save lives, and if it's available, uh, I'm sure it's available in schools too, uh, mm -hmm. with the with the school nurses, etc. So you just you just never know what's going to happen. You have to be prepared. In fact, some schools have it right by the AED. So when you go into the uh, autom automated defibrillator, if there's a heart attack. It's right there. You break the glass, you open up the thing, the alarm goes off, you're getting the knock can, you open up the door, it's the triggering uh, the front desk that there's a medical emergency somewhere. It doesn't say if it's got the knock can or if it's for medical for heart condition, but when you go for that AED, that knock can is sitting right there. They're going to know something is happening in that area to get the school resource officer down to, to get the ambulance, to get somebody to help you. I mean, the students, I'm not talking Woo, but I'm talking other cities. I'm not sure if Woo does have that program. But a lot of cities, a lot of states are having the Narcan available right behind the glass. So if something happens, they can get the help rather than wait. I mean, you've got minutes, as I said in my previous program. If the brain stops getting oxygen four to six minutes, you're getting brain damage. In 10 minutes to 12 minutes, it's brain dead. There's really nothing to work with when you bring them back. And it's so important is to get that opioid off the receptors in the brain so you can start breathing again. 
I mean, I know kids are being taught in gym class, CPR, they're being taught the Heimlich Maneuver, and this is wonderful. Take it one step further. Show them how to administer Narcan. It's a very simple thing to do. The new ones that are coming out is like an afro-nasal mist. You just put it in the nose and squeeze it. There's nothing to assemble like a syringe. It's a lot easier to use. And this is something that's being put down by all these bills that are being released with money to teach, to put this out there. I mean, where do you see this going? You've been out there for now 20, 30 years as a legislature. Where do you see this program going? Well, I think it's, 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 certainly, it's certainly going in the right direction, if, to answer the question directly. But, you know, when, you, when you've been in, in, in this type of situation with juvenile probation and adult probation all my life, uh, it used to be that uh, parents and educators, you know, it was a stigma to come down to the district court by a parent or an educator to say, hey, listen, my child has a problem or this has a problem. Nowadays, the stigma is not there anymore. You know, at least you can get down there and know you're going to get some kind of help. So, I mean, any education, it brings education to the schools. It brings uh, ed education to your <coughs> communities. I know Mayor Galvin and Rick, Rick Jolly, I think, have a couple of uh, seminars or uh, symposiums a year. Yes. Invite parents in, you know, about drug addiction. I know Mike Higgins and Vinnie Perro did one, uh, I think they do one a year here. Yeah, and it's very well, well, I know the one that Vinny and Michael did was very well attended because it was a city-wide thing. So anytime you can get education out there and the programs that are available, I think it's, it's a good thing to do. You know, there's another program that you just did over at the Elks on Washington Street a few months ago that was awesome. They came in, Rick Jolly was involved. It was a great program. The parents could come and quietly just go in and see what was available, speak to somebody. I think it was Michael's house that was uh, speaking. It was absolutely awesome that parents can get this information. This is what's so important now is before, let's go back to stigma. Before you would picture the heroin user as the guy under the bridge with no job, the old clothes, and that was the picture everybody got. And now people are realizing, you know, it could be me, it could be you, it could be anybody, somebody that got hooked on a legal opioid for a painkiller. The stigma is going away. People are coming out saying, no, I need help. And that's the most important thing that you can go to your parents and say, mom, dad, I need help. It doesn't matter how you got into it, I need help. We were doing it after school. Everyone started doing it. Oh my God, I got hooked, I can't get off of it. The parents have to realize that if your kid comes to you for help, there's no punishment, forget the punishment. Help your child, he needs help. And he's coming to you, there's no place else to turn. As I said in previous shows, he can't talk to his peers. His peers are probably the kids that got him on the drug in the first place. You can't go to school, ask your teacher, because they're afraid. I'm in the sports team, I'm on the football team. If they find out I'm using drugs, I'll be kicked off the team. There are very little options. So we need these programs out there. We need the guests that I have come in. We need the places that you know to go. I mean, there's one of our other people I'm gonna have coming in shortly is the Boys and Girls Club. That's a good place to go after school, to get out of the cycle, to get off of the street, have a nice place to go. There are plenty of clubs, there are plenty of activities. We've seen Freddie Life Fitness on the show. He has a program. We've seen the Phoenix, which is a program through exercise and gym and other activities on a Friday night that people, instead of going out hanging around on a Friday night getting high, there's a nice activity. I think they have neon bowling as one of their things. There's rock climbing walls. It's something to get you out of that cycle. And the thing is, if we can stop them from getting into the cycle in the first place, that's the goal of this show. I'm sure that's the goal of our legislature, of Jim Dwyer, and everybody out there. If we can miraculously find a way to stop you from getting into the cycle, we don't have to worry about breaking the cycle. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. Well, it's conversations with parents. You, you know, I'm, Nobody likes to have a conversation, being a parent myself, nobody likes to have a conversation that, that you feel nervous about with your children. But I think it's n much more acceptable now that uh, parents are having conversation with their children when they're six, seven years old. You know, there used to be, when I grew up, you didn't talk about it, uh, you talked to them when it was too late. But now I think it's an accepted fact that it's a necessity that you speak to your children and have an open communication with your children. That's why it's so important to be involved with your children. And if you're not an involved parent, then you, you, you roll the dice and you risk your child listening to other influences instead of your own, so. Oh, exactly, well put. Yeah. Now this bill also allows money for schools to be able to fund programs to educate the students one-on-one -on -one or in a group about the dangers of opium and other drugs. Why do you think this is a great idea this money was finally, finally released into the school systems so they could educate on a wide scale basis? Well, you, you said it, you said it perfectly. It's just education. I mean, any, any kind, anytime you can, 
release money and know it's going to go to a good cause. Uh, and I think people obviously don't mind paying their tax dollars when exactly. their tax dollars is going to something good. So when it's going to programs and, and education programs and, and extra money for, for school systems, for them to be able to discuss it in their health programs and with their teachers, it's, it's nothing but a great thing. And that's what's so important is being able to feel free to discuss it in the auditorium with a professional at the school during an assembly that you can ask questions one-on-one, -on -one. you can get direct answers, you can talk to guests that are educated and know what they're talking about instead of trying to look it up on the internet or ask your friends, you're asking professionals. And this is why these are so important. This is just getting education out there, which is one of the purposes of why I do this show. I'm not going to get on TV and say, guys, don't do drugs. We're past that. We know drugs aren't good for you. The purpose of what we're doing here with my guests, with Jim Dwyer, and all our other and future guests is to show you where you can go. If you really want the help, the purpose of this show, at the end of every show, is to have an address to show you where you can go, a phone number you can call for help. It's done discreetly. You don't have to wave, wave a flag saying, hey, I use drugs. This is done so discreetly. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. This is the purpose of why we're out here doing this. Jim, are there any final yeah. questions? Do you have any final answers, no, thoughts you'd like to leave on us? I just encourage all the parents to, to look at things as it is, not as you want to see things. I mean, I know my wife and I were very involved with our, with our, with our two daughters growing up, and you know, you like to think everything is fine and dandy and everything, but you have to look at the signs. You have to have an open mind, because doing that, you're, you're doing a child a favor. If you're just putting blinkers on and not seeing the reality of a situation, that's just a subtle sign to your child that, you know, I guess my parents don't care for me too much, or I can get away with a little bit here and a little bit here. That's why the appropriation for the $15,000 during the budget sign mm -hmm. it was, uh, was very important to me personally, and uh, to be able to, to earmark that towards Ricky Jolly's uh, drug, Women's Drug awesome. and Energy program, that allows them to bring in extra speakers. That allows them to, to buy material. It allows them to do the things that they might not have done. So uh, that being said, I just would uh, encourage all the parents to look at as it is. I have a neighbor of mine and he loves his child so much and I saw him the other day for Christmas and. You know, I know he has a, has a child that's, that's uh, going through some problems. Every once in a while, he know, knew I was in, sort of in the business a little bit over the years. He'd come up to me and would talk about his child. You know, and my heart would go out to him and would make me feel very thankful that I'm not going through that program, pro, uh, problem. Uh, my daughters, uh, my, my, my family members. Uh, and it affects every family. But, uh, you know, my heart went out to him, you know, and you wish him a Merry Christmas and you can see that look in his yeah, face. Oh, you know, exactly. The only Christmas present this man wants is his child to live a productive life, be safe, you know, and not worry. Every time that child goes out of that house, this poor guy has to worry. And it, my heart just goes out to him to think that he's living this psychological torture, whether his child's going to become come home safe, you know, if the phone rings at night, you know, what, what's this all about? So, you know, it's, it's so sad that I'm just encouraging everybody to ask for help. There is help out there. Go to your district court, ask for help, go to the police station. I know that our Wuben Police Department is very active with their drug, drug uh, they'll get in touch with the professionals. And uh, it isn't like the old days, it shouldn't be any stigma involved. Just open, open your heart and go down there and see things as the way they are and, and do the best you can to protect your child. As well said, as perfectly said, this is yeah. why James Wyatt has been a state representative. I could not have closed that out better myself. A couple of things we want to know, we've been talking about money all this time with the state. Through administrative action, the Baker Polito administration will also invest up to $219 million over the next five years from the state's 1115 Medicaid waiver. This began in fiscal year 2018 to meet the needs of individuals with addictions and or co-occurring disorders. For more information of the Commonwealth's response to the opioid epidemic, as well as the links, these will be at the bottom of your screen. The latest data, visit www.mass.gov slash opioid response. To get help from a substance use disorder, you may visit the state's helpline at www.helplinema.org or call the Massachusetts Substance Abuse Helpline. And that number is 1-800-327. 5050. Again, all this information will be at the bottom of your screen. 
I absolutely have to thank State Representative James Dwyer for appearing in today's episode and the best in his upcoming retirement. For America in Crisis, Breaking the Cycle of Addiction, my name is David Hunt. Again, if you need help, help is out there. All you have to do is ask. Thank you so much for viewing, and please tell friends about this show. This show can be viewed on Cycle, on uh, the Women channels, and on YouTube. Thank you. Have a wonderful New Year's. God bless. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, John.